Now, complete high school football coverage. This is 10 Sports First and 10. Sponsored by Magic City Ford, Freedom First Credit Union, and Shules Home. Welcome to week two of the First and 10 show that's been banned in seven states but not Virginia. It's an old school type of night. As you can see, we took the restrictor plate off to give the Red Dragon a little more juice. Our staff can handle that kind of power. That's how you do it. That's how you debate. And this is how you web. Our guru, Jeff Williamson, has everything you need in high school football. WSLS.com, first and 10, it is right here for you. Which brings us to the game of the week. Two old school philosophies colliding tonight. Franklin County and Salem are led by men who believe in physical play and sound fundamentals. My description of Franklin County at Salem, a rock fight in a phone booth. Our own Eric Johnson was in Salem for the blow by blow. Eric? Yes, indeed. Your description there, Appy, was spot on. This one was definitely a tough and rugged matchup. We knew that this would be a very physical one when we talked to both sides earlier in the week. It definitely lived up to that moniker with this one being sealed with a defensive stance to end it. Let's get to the highlights now. Out at Salem, this was the home opener for the Spartans here tonight. Don Holter leading them now. Franklin County strikes first. J. Ron Smith had a handoff off the gut for a touchdown. But here's Salem with two scores before the half. Bobby Pinello, 13 yards out. He's good. Second half, this is where we find Isaiah Persinger taking the pitch, clips the end zone for the 16-yard score. 21-7 Spartans. The Eagles down, but not out. They soar back. Josh Luckett, he's lucky. Airs it out deep. Garrett Garman, no GPS needed. Found the end zone, and we're tied at 21 all in the fourth. Salem would have the last say. Hunter Cheney rolls out, throws it deep. A wide open Xavion Wood for the 78-yard score. And after a defensive stop on fourth and inches, it is Salem sealing it with a 27-21 win. I'm real proud of our guys. You know, it wasn't always pretty and perfect, but we made plays when we had to. And there at the end, we got a fourth down stop. And, you know, I'm just, uh, I'm really proud of them. But obviously, there's more work to be done. Uh, we play physical. Both teams play physical. And uh, you can tell that both teams wanted to win tonight, but obviously Salem showed out. And we showed them who the most dominant team was. Salem moving to a 2-0 mark on the season, heading into an open week. As for Franklin County, no reason to hold their heads low tonight. They have one of the best defensive fronts I have ever seen in this area. I expect them to make a lot of noise as the season continues. Happy. All right, Eric, thank you very much. Meantime, another epic early season collision between two state semifinal teams from a year ago, Blacksburg in 4A, Lord Botetot in 3A. Here we go from Blacksburg. Both teams winning their opening games. So undefeated clash, first quarter, Evan Eller keeping it. He's in the zone, 7-0 LB. Second quarter, here come the Bruins. Luke Goforth is your quarterback, breaking some tackles. Watch him terse, reverse, call an Ursa field. He reaches the promised land on the 29-yard scramble. The game tied at 7. Second half belonged to the Cavs. Jamie Harless's gang gets it done. Eller once again, the power football. It's 16-7 LB. Eller had an interception in this game as well. Uh, he would get it done. LB 23 to 7 over Blacksburg. They moved to 2 and 0 on the season. Meantime, how about Brookville at PH 7-7 game in the first? Senior quarterback Roy Gunn. Here he is finding Gavin McCormick. They like to go track meet. They do at PH and watch the swing pass. Shake bake big yards, then breaks the tackle and he's gone. 14-7, PH the lead. Brookville trying to respond. Jared Glinski is one tough hombre. Watch him here. He'll keep and sweep for Brookville at quarterback, and he is off and running, pinballing into PH territory. But now, trying to cash it in, Glinski, uh, they're going for it here on fourth down. Aaron and Darren deep. Watch how many hands this goes off in the end zone. Tip. Tap, pick, pick. Daquan Calloway had a shot, but Elijah Davis comes up with it. 28-21 PH is your winner. Giles at Christiansburg tonight. The Blue Demons first up. 20-yard touchdown 
stomp here. Maston Stanley shedding tacklers for the touchdown. Second quarter, Christiansburg up 7-0. Quarterback MJ Hunter keeping it. And, uh, yeah, he's going wide right. Pylon, touchdown, 14-0. Giles in that single wig finally pays off. Watch right here. Our Fotagi loses the ball, as we often do in the single wing. But it's Dominique Collini. He's going 60 yards to the house, 28-13. Christiansburg is a winner. Pulaski goes to 2-0, 42-6 is your final. Carroll County with a one-point win. George Wythe over Fort Chiswell. Galax doubles up Martinsville tonight, 51-25. That's how you do it. That's how you debate. In Rockbridge tonight, the Wildcats and the Colonels, well, they went point-counterpoint all evening long. The Terriers were invaded by the Titans. We'll see if Hidden Valley could stay perfect in the early going. And at Covington, the teacher meets the student many, many years later, plus this. Stay tuned for more First in 10. Woo! You're watching First in 10, the most complete high school football coverage in the region on WSLS 10. Two teams whose stock is certainly rising met tonight in Rockbridge. William Fleming starting to gain a foothold under their new coach. The Wildcats quickly becoming contenders in that Valley District. Let's get you out as here comes Rockbridge. And they're 1-0. First drive of the game. Miller J. Aaron it deep. Jalik Lynch out there. And he's almost gone there. Nice catch. That'll set up Gage Schaefer. And, uh, yeah, look at the rolling ball of butcher knives that is Gage Schaefer. Fleming would answer with a touchdown and this pick, both by Matthew Eaton. So let's give him the proper props. Nice grab right there to stop a drive. Later, Rockbridge County going for it. Tough call on fourth down, but get it to Schaefer, and he's gone. This one back and forth all night, 28-26. Fleming is a winner. North side at Cave Spring. So here we go. They're fired up, and I don't know, we're going Woodstock, I guess, at Cave Spring tonight. Here comes Lucas Duncan to the sideline, and he would eventually get the score, and our photog is taken out at the same time. Look out! But everybody's okay. Meantime, North side eventually answers. Christian Fisher taking the short handoff here. And he is busting some tackles for the 15-yard touchdown. Beginning of the third, Sid Webb, fake handoff, launching it to Isaac Earls, catching it in stride, north side, 37-13. They are in the win column. All right, the Titans and Terriers both escaped week one with hard-fought wins. Tonight we get an early idea if either or both are ready for prime time. Brooke, I was at the Bird game last week. I liked their defense. Took a long look at Hidden Valley. I like their offense. Something's got to give. Well, they were both really good tonight. Hidden Valley looked great. Bird looked great. But Bird looked the best out of everybody in just the first play. And we'll look at that in a second. But turnovers and dozens of penalties made this anyone's game. But it was the Titans who prevailed. Both teams heading into the matchup 1-0. and Bird, they're looking hot to start. First play of the game, Hidden Valley's Wyatt Early's pass out to Hunter Harris is good. But he fumbles it with this hit by a swarm of Terriers. And Eli West scoops and scores. Bird goes up 7-0 early. But the Titans come back fighting. Handoff to Jovan Wilson from short. It's enough, and Hidden Valley goes up 8-7 into the first quarter. Jump to the third quarter. Titans up 15-7. Bird with the goal line stand. They're going to get the ball on the one-yard line heading the other way. Dylan Hatfield in the pocket, pitches it back to Logan Baker, but it's fumbled in the end zone. Ashton Carroll jumps on it, and it's touchdown Titans. Despite the rough start, Hidden Valley beats Bird 22-7, and the Titan defense made sure that touchdown was the last one the Terriers would have. You know, I thought they uh, they stepped up really well tonight when we needed to. You know, Bird did some really, really good things. They're, they're a really good football team. Um, but when we when we had to make a play, we did. Uh, especially, you really can't start a game any worse than the way we started it. And, you know, you can't let the first play of the game define the game. And I thought they did a really good job of settling in and, and playing some very physical Hidden Valley type football. So Hidden Valley heading into week two, two, week three, two and nothing. They take on Northside at home next Friday. Back to you, Appy. All right, thank you, Brooke. Great matchup in Covington tonight. Chris Jones coached Bath County to a state title many moons ago. His quarterback, 
Jake Phillips, who's right there. He went on to quarterback at William & Mary. Now he's the head coach at Stanton. There's Coach Jones. And here we go. There's a guy named Sean Smith Jr. on the field. First carry. Look at him book. Former first and ten player of the week from Covington. It's 7-0. Stanton would try to answer. We know Coach Phillips likes that wide open. He likes the spread. That one's not going to work. That's a fumble. But Stanton eventually got it rolling for a 20-7 victory. Roar retreat at Eastmont tonight. Pick it up in the third. Retreat up 12-6. Fumble on the staff. The Mustangs' Anthony Travada recovers it. Mustangs couldn't capitalize. Roar retreats Isaac O'Neill. It's going to go up top here, connecting with Wyatt Sage. Nice throw and catch, and he's out around the five. And O'Neill would keep it and punch it in. This is a power move for six. Royal Retreat wins 24-6. to six. Some more Pioneer scores for you. Auburn all over Craig County tonight. Narrows, Blanks, Northwood, and Buffalo Gap over Perry McClure, 48 to nothing. What about Allegheny trying to snap that losing streak? Taking on Bath County tonight, and here we go. The fight in Lindsay Ward's looking for a victory, and they would get one. Travis Findlay right there and it's 35 nothing. Then Dylan Burton taking the second half kickoff. Here he comes. There he goes. That's a touchdown. 54-14. Allegheny is victorious. Three River scores for you. Floyd by one over Patrick tonight. River heads downs Glenver and James River gets a victory 20-8 on the road. You're my boy, Blue. You're my boy. Blue will only describe one of the two teams that battled in Dan River. That and more when first and turn or first and ten returns right after this. A couple of perennial powers with a whole lot of talent. Magna Vista at Dan River, both 1-0. and We've got a Dan River recovery of a fumble right there. Quinton Gunn comes up with it. Magna Vista brought the defense, though. Tracy Glass, the quarterback, and it's Freddie Roberts' slick pick right there. Good return and a big hit at the end of this play. Yeah, these two teams were letting it fly. Dryas Hairston going up top for the touchdown pass to Christopher Elliston. Uh, Magna Vista goes on to a 20 to six victory. Meantime, Appomattox 17 nothing over Rustburg. Gretna was a winner, and Chatham over Randolph Henry. More scores for you: Alta Vista blanks Prince Edward. William Campbell by 14. Page County over Nelson 46 to 14. Which brings us some, to some other stories in the Seminole, Eric, including Liberty. I'm not sure we got a good measure with them because Franklin County showed how tough they were. Plus, I'm dying to see what JF has with their new coach. So yeah. go ahead. Yeah, you know that district is always stacked. Yeah. Liberty always has some surprises. Nonetheless, they did exactly the same tonight. Did a few surprises here. Getting amped up for this one as they hosted Fort Defiance Liberty's Tanner Stanley swing pass to Jonathan Gass. Juke move there. Get the ambulance. Broken ankles on the field. He's going to find the end zone 60 yards. And look, at, look at the ref. Oh, Jukes him also. Oh, 7 nothing Liberty lead. That man is lethal. Liberty's run defense stout. Hitting Fort Defiance's Austin Monroe stuffing him early. Later, Liberty trying to run the option. Fumble. This was returned by Fort Defiance's Riley Miller. This is going to tie the game up 7-all later at the end of the half. Liberty's Tanner Stanley looking for something here. He's picked off by Coy Brown. Nonetheless, Liberty hangs on for the 21-20 victory. How about JF at Stanton River? They had a 21-7 halftime lead. This is Antoine, Mr. Cupid Shuffle. Oh, He's nice. back at it. Come on now. Nice. 45 yards to the house, 28-7 lead. Stanton River's Lucas Overstreet dumps it off to Jacob Kirtley. He's going to skirt up the sideline. Could he go all the way? No, this ball's actually going to be punched oh. out by Dontaeus Braxton. So it's a touchback. Nonetheless, we're back to Mr. Cupid. Open field. Paul oh. drives his way to the end zone. Get out of the way. 35-7 JF lead. They go on to a 42-14 victory. How about your defending state champ, Heritage Pioneers, on the road at John Marshall? 
They are looking sharp early. Deep bomb, Brian Trent makes the nice catch, 21-0 in third. More from the Pioneers, Silas Rucker causing all kind of ruckus, showing off the legs, gets to the wow. sideline, scampers 30 yards for the touchdown, 27-0. John Marshall did get a 70-yard scoring play here through the air, but Heritage was too much, 57-20, your final score. I look at some other scores here. LCA with a 42-12 victory over Brunswick. GW Danville over Amherst County. Private schools, North Cross gets a win on the road while we have a few other games slated for tomorrow at 1 p.m. and 5 respectively. All right, that's week two. It was a fine show indeed. Enjoy your football weekend and I'll see you next week.